Hey guys, welcome back to another edition here in Beijing, China. As China's economy has grown, one thing they've really invested in is the art world. Yeah, and you can really see that by going to various museums or um, in the money that they've poured into performing arts centers like the Opera House, like the the Egg, that is <laughs> it's called. And also, um, they've really been focusing on arts education in the school system. We wanted to feature a specific area that we checked out today. It's the biggest art district in Beijing. It's called Seven Nine Eight. It's it's a funny name. It's just a string of numbers. It basically started as warehouses and factories for the East German government, and eventually the East German government left. It was one thing and then another, and nothing really stuck until in the two thousands, like forty years after it was built, it was just. Kind of mostly empty, with a couple of lofty little studio apartments that were super sketchy. They were subletted uh -huh. from subletters. They didn't have public bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> but the rent was cheap, and because it was cheap, it attracted artists who came in and sort of made the place hip. And this is, you know, a story that we've seen again and again and again. You know, places like Williamsburg, where these artists come in because the rent is cheap, and then it becomes cool, and then people want to move in, and the rent goes up. That started to happen, but before that happened, the 2008 Olympics happened. The 2008 Olympics basically, like Beijing went through a whole makeover. Basically, English was added to everything that could mm -hmm. have English on it. The cities were like repainted. The push towards electric cars started then. The subway system opened. Yeah, the government poured so much money into Beijing, but because of this expansion that happened, it kind of pushed the city outwards into the outer circles where 798 just happened to be. If you don't know, Beijing is broken into basically a bunch of different circles. They're all highways. <laughs> it started back with the Forbidden City, where it was just surrounded by walls. Mm -hmm. And over time, as the roads were built, this idea of, of the circle surrounding mm -hmm. Center City became bigger and bigger and bigger. Back then, I, I remember when I was uh, in elementary school here and when I was in first grade, there was nothing beyond like third circle. <laughs> and 798 is between the fourth and fifth circle. There's like super tall buildings and everything. But it's so nice that they've preserved this art district. Robbie, what were your favorite things? One of them was just walking around and seeing all the street art. I really liked this mural they had. It was like Godzilla fighting. I don't know who the, the orange toad guy with the sword was, <laughs> but I thought that was really cool. It's a crossover. Cool. <laughs> it probably is a crossover. Yeah. Oh, there was this really cool mural. Uh, it was a guy with a camera, but the way that he's holding it, it kind of looks like a gun. And to me, that was like sort of talking about how like an image or like the media can be just as powerful you know, as a weapon, depending on how it's used. Yeah. I really like that one. It was so cool, because <laughs> at first you just see this guy holding up a gun, and then as you get closer, you're like, it's a camera. And, it, and it's like a perspective thing. you got to kind of find the right place to stand to give it that proper perspective. Mm -hmm. The other one I really liked was they had this, like, drunk Cupid. <laughs> he was, like, drinking a beer, but I don't know, maybe he's drunk on lava or something. Uh, drunk Cupid on, on beer. <laughs> he's a baby, though. His wee-wee was hanging out. Whatever, he's Cupid, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what about you? What were your favorite things? I really liked all the statues that were around, all the sculptures. One of my favorites is a sculpture of a Chinese lion. They're very distinctive. They're in front of a lot of people's houses. Stone, they usually come in pairs. They kind of look like they have like a the dragon head. Because like a lot of the, the creatures here are kind of like hybrids, right? Like it's yeah. a mythological creature like mixed with lion. They're like, a mythological creature mixed with like... Right, it's kind of like if they can't be part dragon, why not, right? <laughs> but this one is so cute because it's it's one that's sitting on its butt <laughs> with its arms up, kind of like what Milo would do, our dog. <laughs> and he he's just like smiling, the biggest smile, like... Looking like a puppy. <laughs> it was so cute because they're supposed to be fierce. They're supposed to represent like um, safety and everything. And then just to see one that's acting like a puppy. Yeah, kind of poking fun at Chinese culture in a, in a light way. Yeah, it was very cute. <laughs> and then there was this other one that like we were walking down the street. We saw like three cages stacked on top of each other. And as we got closer, we realized that inside were like a velociraptor. 
a T-Rex and like some other kind of dinosaur. I mean, I called it kind of like the Jurassic World, Jurassic Park <laughs> sculpture. But you'll see like so much like Western influence on a lot of this art. There was this whole section that was just like the Simpsons and they had like Angry Birds, although I don't know if Angry Birds is Western or not, but I don't know. you see all these influences like from around the world. Right. Oh, and oh, oh, and one of my favorite sculptures uh -huh. is, you know, that famous sculpture in San Diego? Yes, it's yeah. based on a portrait of a World War II vet coming home and kissing a random girl who he just met on the street. And yeah. and this photographer caught the moment. At first we, we saw it and we're like, oh hey, they recreated it. And then we got closer and we're like, they're both Chinese. But what are some reasons that maybe you would want to go? Well, first of all, as we said, it's free. Good for your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> and when you, you know, walk around these art galleries, it's basically you're having a free pass to like a bunch of different art museums. And it's so good for whatever amount of time you have. Like mm -hmm. we were interested in street art, so we wandered around looking for street art and it, it was not hard to find. <laughs> it was everywhere. But we kind of covered the whole facility in, like, in two like two, three hours. Yeah. But if you really want to make a day out of it, you can get there at 10 and literally go into every gallery, every store, and that'll take you maybe like one, two days. Yeah, because I mean, there must have been at least, I would say, a minimum of like 12 galleries there. Pace uh -huh. from New York is there, and Goethe Institute from Germany is there, along with a few others. Plus they have tons of different art shows and events that take place every couple of weeks. Yeah, and Robbie stumbled upon this rehearsal for a runway show. I think they were getting ready for like a fashion show, but the models were like going down, pretending like it was the end of the walkway, and I think they had judges there kind of, you know, telling them what they can improve on. Oh, and most people spoke English, so I didn't have to translate. <laughs> that was definitely a happy surprise. <laughs> yeah, if you're, it's like a nice break for you if you're an English speaker and you're in China and you don't speak any Chinese, it's really nice to go somewhere for a day where you don't have to really like mime things out. But overall I'd have to say that 798 was a lot of fun. I had a good time walking around, seeing all the street art, exploring the galleries, uh, and getting some coffee. Yeah, and it's not something that you expect to see in China, but it's cool that it's here. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed exploring Beijing's largest art district. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe buttons. And if you want to stay up to date on all of our new content, make sure to smash that bell. <laughs> if there's anything we missed, leave it in the comments section below. Oh, and if you've been, don't forget to tell us what your experience is like. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Safe travels. I'm Robbie Frank. This is Kathy Zen. And as always, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.